Hey, it's Joel, and I'm not in my studio, I'm somewhere else, because I want to talk to you about Fusion 360. Fusion 360 is great when you're 3D printing because you can create the models yourself that you want to print out, just like what this guy did. Hey guys, Garrett from Chaos Core Tech. Garrett learned Fusion 360 on his own by Googling and following online tutorials, and now he creates some of the most detailed models you've ever seen. Garrett has five cool tricks that he's gonna tell you when you just are getting started with Fusion. Things that you wanna learn that might give you the edge to get you learning Fusion faster and creating things better. And he's gonna tell you right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Nailed it. <laughs> hey guys, I am Garrett from Chaos Core Tech and I'm here to show you five tips targeted at beginners in Fusion 360. And these are things that I wish I would have known or known how they worked a little bit better when I was starting out. Okay, so my first tip is called Z-Up. Now, when you're working with 3D spaces, most 3D spaces use Y as the up and down axis. But 3D printing does things a little bit differently and they use Z for the up and down and Y goes in and out. So if you're gonna be using Fusion 360 for the specific purposes of 3D printing, um, you'll wanna change this setting. It will help you a lot and it'll just keep you from having to reorient things after the fact. So in order to do the, to change the Z up setting, what you need to do is come over to the top right where it shows the name that you've logged into Fusion with. Click right there and underneath that menu, you'll see preferences. Click that. And it's just on this first page here and default modeling orientation. Change that to Z up and for 3D printing, it'll make your life a lot easier. Tip number two is about selecting objects. Now this is something you wouldn't think about, but I can guarantee you'll use it more than you think you would. It is about selecting objects through other objects. And this just basically prevents you from having to move the camera around a ton while you're working on a 3D model. So sometimes selecting the objects can actually be one of the hardest things. As you can see here, these are some D20 dice and I've got my logo here on the top but from the camera position that I'm at, it's very difficult to select some of these objects here. And this also works for objects that are kind of behind other objects. So in order to select these, what you're gonna do is hold your left mouse button, like hover over it, hold your left mouse button, and a menu pops up. And it actually casts a ray through the object where your mouse is, and it will um, present you with everything that came into contact with that ray. And so that way you can kind of hover or hover through the list and it will highlight what you're hovering over. And say that I wanted to select that inner C, I can just select this face here and now I have that selected. Okay, tip number three. And this one might not be a problem for some of you, but for people like me that uh, started out working in Tinkercad, this can be kind of confusing. It is the difference between the sketch environment in Fusion 360 and the modeling environment. So basically the sketch environment is drawing things in 2D using a lot of dimensions and just basically getting a flat picture of what you want. Then you can move to the modeling environment and bring those sketches into 3D. Knowing the difference between the sketching environment and the modeling environment is crucial to developing in Fusion 360, but luckily it's pretty simple. Just think of it as the difference between 3D and 2D. So when you open up Fusion, you're granted with this blank slate right here. And usually the first thing you do is create a sketch and that button's right up here underneath the sketch menu. It's usually readily available. So we click that, select which plane we want it to be on, and boom, we have a sketch. So say we wanna create a little box here. I can hit the R key or come up to sketch and create a rectangle. I'm just gonna hit the R key, and I'm just gonna select a couple points because I don't care how big it is. Just make a, a nice box right here, but boxes need to have walls. So I'm gonna create a smaller box on the inside. Now from here, we're still in the sketch menu, but technically this is all we need to create a little open box. So in order to exit out back into the 3D workspace, I just have to come over here to the right and click stop sketch. The button is also up here on the top menu in case you prefer to use that one. So I'll click stop sketch. And as you can see over on the left, we are back in the modeling environment. So from here, it's still just a 2D plane but we can select this and extrude it into the 3D world. So in order to do that, um, in order to make a box, we just need a bottom plane and then the walls. So let's create the bottom plane first. I will select both the outer ring and the middle part, and I'm just gonna extrude it up 
about four millimeters. That should be good enough. Now, this is something that can kind of catch you off guard too. Um, after you first select something from a sketch, the sketch disappears. But if you come back over the, to the sketch menu over here, you'll just see that the light bulb has turned off. Click that again and your sketch is back where we want it. Now this is where the selecting through objects comes in handy because now we can just select this, the sketch, um, the outer ring on the sketch. But we'll select it through this object by left clicking, holding, and we can go to this profile. Now we can extrude this up and make sure that we're set to join instead of cut. Hit OK and boom, we have a little box. It's as easy as that. And just, just to recap, we draw the two different sections of this box in 2D, change to the 3D environment and extrude it up into the 3D world. Okay, tip number four, it's a little more advanced, but you may need to use this when you're first starting out. When you're creating a sketch, you may notice that some of the lines and points don't behave like you think they should. And this is usually due to constraints, and you can see a full list of the constraints over on the right-hand side when you're in the sketch mode. Adding or removing these constraints can make a world of difference when you're modeling these things, and it can actually make your life a lot easier in the long run. Constraints can either be your best friend or your worst enemy when it comes to working in sketches. Um, so it's good to kind of know what, what they're doing for you and where they're kind of maybe causing behavior that you wouldn't expect. So let's take this rectangle that we have for an example. Um, if I try to move this top left corner, you'll notice that it moves everything together. Like both lines come with you when you move it. And that may be what you want, but if you don't, you can click on it and you can see this little um, icon appears next to it. If I click that and delete it, these two are no longer welded together. I can move them separately. So just being aware of what constraints do and um, how to use them to your benefit can make a, a world of difference when you're modeling. And tip number five is the use of the intersection tool. Now this is something that came pretty naturally to me, but I've gotten a ton of questions um, as to what I'm doing when people watch me model. So this is something that's very useful for getting details onto a curved surface that you can't just extrude and have there. Pretty much everyone knows what joining two objects does and it's pretty simple to figure out what subtracting objects from each other does. But intersecting can be a little more intricate, but it can um, allow you to do some really cool things like creating um, details on curved surfaces that might otherwise be pretty hard to create. So we've got this cylinder here and I'm gonna create a sketch right on top of it. And we're gonna put some text on there and we're just gonna make the text fit to the outside of the cylinder. So if I come down here to text and I just type in 3DPN and it's upside down, so I'll just flip that over. Sometimes it's upside down, I don't know why. And I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Center it a little bit and that is good. So I'll hit okay. So the first thing we do when we're doing this is create a copy of the body that we want the details to come out of, just so we have two of them ready to go. So I've got two copies of this cylinder, and now I'm gonna select this part of the sketch, extrude it, but instead of cut, I'm gonna go to intersect. And make sure you have one of the original bodies turned off so you're not intersecting that one. And you do that just by clicking the little light bulb next to its name. So I will hit OK, and you can see that we have this really nice curved text on here. And I can bring back the original body that we hid now, and if we move the, um, the intersected body out just a little bit, you'll see that the text is starting to protrude from the cylinder, but it follows the curve of the cylinder very nicely. Wait, wait, Joel, come back. I think I've got one more to show him. Is that cool? Oh yeah, cool. Go for it. Okay, so bonus number six, let's talk about the camera anchor point because one of the things I notice when watching new people use Fusion 360 is that they can kind of lose the object every once in a while when the camera's not rotating like they think they should. And I think I've got something that can help you fix that. So this one came to me last second, but I think it's very useful, um, especially when you kind of lose track of the camera and it's not behaving how you want it to behave. So most of the time, the camera rotates around the center of the object, and that's kind of what you would intuitively expect it to do. But if you look right about the center of where the camera's rotating, there's a little green dot, and that's actually what the camera is rotating around. And you can change the position of that dot 
by holding shift in middle mouse clicking. So say that I was working on Buzz's head up here, it's very inconvenient to rotate around the center point um, because it doesn't behave the way that you think it would, and it's just very clunky. So if I hold shift and middle click on his forehead, now the point of rotation is around his forehead. And then once we're back out, we can just shift middle click on his pelvis and we've got it back in the center. So that is a super useful tip that I have uh, found a ton of use for when modeling in here. And that would have been good to know when you were first starting out. For sure, definitely, because I, there was several times that I just got completely lost with the model. And I, I, there was actually a few times that I closed Fusion and had to reopen it just to reset that center point because I didn't know. Because I got, I got it lost like off, off in space over here and the model was just going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, well, I hope that was helpful in some way. Um, I did want to say a huge thank you to Joel for letting me um, do this on his channel, the 3D Printing Nerd channel right here. Um, if you want to see more of this or any of the models I've created, um, you can follow the link down in the description to my channel. I am Chaos Core Tech, also here on YouTube. Okay, guys, well, that's it for me. I'm going to get out of here. Um, and as Joel always says, hug each other more often. And as always, high five. <laughs>